Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Little Rock, and now Pastor Stewart. Welcome back to your Acts Ministry podcast, and we're talking about the way it's supposed to be, but we're not using that as a subject. Our subject is in the negative. It, it is in the negative in that this is not the way it's supposed to be. It, it's a more uh, demonstrative and looking at the things in our lives and declaring this is not the way it's supposed to be. Now, I want to look at another story today. We've been talking about in the area of finance, so I want to look at another story today. And that's found in the book of Numbers. Numbers number 27, Numbers 27, and I want to just read a first, just just an excerpt from this and kind of explain the rest of it. And the Bible says, then came the daughters of Zelophehad, the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, from the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And these were the name of the of his daughters, Mala, Noah, Hagla, Milcah, and Terzah. These are the daughters of Zelophehad. Now, I want to talk about these five young ladies because they're in a situation where they're going to be excluded from some things financially, excluded from what was really theirs. Now, it is so important to understand the whole gist of this story. Because now they're going to come and demand. We might not want to use the word demand, but they're going to come and they're going to inquire. They're going to ask. Now, since we have the authority of God in uh, the dispensation of grace that we live in, since Jesus Christ gave us authority after his resurrection, we can demand some things. If God said it, we can demand it. We can demand it. It's ours. We have authority to demand it. If God said this is yours. You can demand that. It belongs to you because God said it was yours. You don't ask for something that is already yours, that God said is yours and I want you to have it. You know what you do? You take possession of it. And we see that in Joshua chapter 1. The promised land belonged to them. They didn't ask for it. They took possession of what was already rightfully theirs. So in, in Numbers chapter 27, we got five young ladies here. Five young ladies that come and they stand before Moses, verse 2. And they stood before Moses, before Eleazar the priest, and before the leaders and all the congregation by the doorway of the tabernacle of meeting, saying, Our father died in the wilderness, but he was not in the company of those who gathered together against the Lord in company with Korah. But he died in his own sins, and he had no sons. Why should the name of our father be removed from among his family because he had no son? Give us a possession among our father's brothers. Now, that's what we want to talk about. They were, they were excluded, excluded by tradition, excluded by man-made laws. They are, they are excluded. Now, they got two options. One option is just to say nothing and just let it happen. Just go on and, and go into poverty, lose all your inheritance, all your possession, lose all the financial uh, prosperity that has been given or uh, handed down to you from your father. And that's what's getting ready to happen. They're going to lose everything, everything. And the only thing they would have is what they accumulated with their husbands if they got married. So here they are, and they come. And they're saying to Moses, to the priests, I love that because they have a financial problem and they go to a spiritual advisor. And we sometimes don't understand that. I'm not saying don't go to a financial advisor. You should do that. But there's times that we have to acknowledge him, not times. It should always be that we acknowledge him first. Then he gives us direction on who to go to, who to use, who to believe, and so forth. So the five ladies here, they go to the priests, to Moses, to other leaders. And they say that, hey, our father, he died. Now, he had some problems. He died. But what he did in his sins uh, shouldn't exclude us. And because he didn't have any sons, it shouldn't exclude us 
from what is rightfully ours. So you have to, you have to look at stuff and something inside of you say this is not the way it's supposed to be. Now, 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 this, listen to this because this is important. They said this is not the way it's supposed to be. Now they're saying that, they're saying that in so many words with their actions. Now this is the way it has been. Now that throw many people off because most people, the way it has been, they think that's the way it should always be. And I'm going to repeat that again. Some people believe if it's this the way it has been, this the way it should always be. How many times have you heard people say, we never done it like that before? That doesn't mean it's wrong. That doesn't mean it's right. But you hear that. We've never done it this way before. Okay, so let's be the first to do it if it's something that is right. These five ladies went because legally everything they have is not going to go to them. It's not going to them. Because this the way it has always been. That's it. There ain't no justification. It's just the way we've always done it. Now, some people, some people really believe that what has always been done should, should continue and never change. And they especially believe like that when it comes to the things of God, to the things of the church. They believe that what great, 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 great grandmama did a hundred years ago, we should keep on doing the same thing. So when these five ladies come, this had never happened before. It never happened. It will always go to the sons, but now he has no sons. So there's no one to 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 give them to uh, help them. There's no man here. So it looks like that everything that was meant for them. Is going to be lost. And they make a request. They come before Moses and they say, you know, they, they say, give us a possession. I don't seem like a question. We're not asking this. This, this seems like a statement because they are right. They are right. And when they come, even though it not, this is. Brothers and sisters, if, if you can just grab hold to this, if you can just grab hold to this, just grab hold to what I'm getting ready to say and, and as, as we read this text, because it is so familiar to us. This is what, what happens on so many occasions today, so many occasions. And we think because it has always been like this, since it's always been like this, we need to keep it like this. And that is not true. You say, well, that's just you saying that. Well, what if I can show you? Deal with these young ladies. It was something that God said. God said. So let's, let's look at it. They come, to, they come to the leadership. They come to the spiritual advisor. And, and, and here they are. And they make their request. Or demand, they say, hey, this belongs to us. I know we've never done it like this before. I know we always do it this way, but this is not right. Now I want you to check out, I want you to check out uh, God's response and see what God said about their request. What did the Lord, what did the Lord say about it? Because now Moses, after, after they made this re the request, after they made this request, now Moses got to take it to God. You got to take it to God. Stay tuned for more of Frank Stewart. And now for some special announcements. Thanks for partnering with the Axe Ministries. We value your service and your donations. That's why we've made it easy to make contributions to support our ministry. Simply go to your web browser and click the search bar and type in xministriesonline.org. Then click Donate Online. It's really that easy. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. That's Simple Give. And now, more 
of Pastor Frank Stewart. So the Bible says in verse 5, And Moses brought their cause before the Lord. And, and the Lord said, look at verse 6, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, The daughters of Zelophehad speak right. Now, God just said they right. He, he told the leadership, he told the priests, he told, he told Moses. He says, what they told you is right. So if God says it's right, why was it always been done this way? Well, because people with traditions and their prejudices, they orchestrate certain things to their advantage. It is not. It doesn't mean they're being mean spirited. Doesn't mean that uh, they're being devilish. It just simply means in their understanding, and in, in their limited understanding, this is how they see it. But God says to Moses, "They right." Now you just think about that. They just challenge the law here. They just challenge the traditions, and and God says they're right. They're right. They are right. Give them their possession. So in other words, there are things in our lives that are going on financially, but if we don't, if we don't, if we don't respond to them, you got to respond to it. Remember what the Bible says in, in Mark chapter 11, the fig tree that, that was not producing figs, and the Lord cursed it. The Bible says that the fig tree had to, the, well, the Bible says Jesus answered it. So he's responding to something. In life, you must respond. These five ladies, they didn't just sit down and say, hey, well, you know, what has be, what has been, it's going to continue to be. No, because we've never done it before. It doesn't mean it's right. It doesn't mean we can't change. It doesn't mean we can't make it better. And Moses, give him credit. He just doesn't go with the way it has always been. He takes it to God, and God says they speak the truth. These five women are telling you the truth. This is what should happen. They should not lose their inheritance, their possession, their father's name. This is what should happen with them. That's powerful. But, but, but what I want you to see, if they hadn't felt like, this is not the way it should be. They would have never gone and 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 asked or stated their requests. They would have never went. They they would have never went. They'd have stayed in that one little place, and they would have been thinking if 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 it if it was God's will, we would have never been in this situation. But since we in this situation, it must be His will. No, they recognize it shouldn't be this way. They take the request to those at leadership, Moses, the high priest, all the leaders. And you got to realize all these leaders at this time are, are men. They're males. And they've excluded the women from this part of inheritance from their fathers. It had to be a son. But when they take it to God, God says, you know what? They're right. This is the way it's supposed to be. Brothers and sisters, you must make your demand known to God. Make your petition known to God. And when you make it known to God and see what his will is, then speak that into existence in Jesus' name. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. The Axe Church in North Little Rock is located at 1224 Franklin Street. Morning Glory begins at 8 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Sunday School begins at 8.30 a.m. And for a powerful word, join us at 9.30 a.m. for our morning worship service. Bible study is each Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. At our Conway location, Morning Glory begins at 10 a.m. Sunday School begins at 10.30 a.m. Worship service begins at 11.30 a.m. On Thursday, our Bible class begins at 6.30 p.m. 
For more information, go to axeministriesonline.org or give us a call at 501-329-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. The Axe Church is located at 1423 Indian Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank Stewart. Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. My name is Frank Stewart. I'm the pastor of Axe Ministries in Conway and also in North Little Rock. We also have an outreach on John Barrow where we partnership with the city and other ministries there. I want to invite you to partner with us in this ministry. I want to invite you to share with us in propagating the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are many things that we're doing and we're going to continue to do. We have a vision in mind on how to be a blessing to the community, communities that we're in. So we're asking you to be a partner with us. I believe that God will reward you and he will multiply you. So join us in the Acts ministry in sponsoring not only this broadcast, but what we're doing in the great city of Little Rock, North Little Rock, and also Conway. God bless you.